Hello, my name is Brian Johnson. I'm a product manager at Ditrine Instruments. Today we're going to enter the lab and discuss a little bit about ground loop interference. We'll talk about different grounding schemes for Ditrine accelerometers and walk through a practical demonstration of ground loop interference to show how it may appear in your data. Ground loops are caused by undesired differences of electric potentials in your measurement chain. Typically, this difference is between the ground of your accelerometer and the ground of your data acquisition system oscilloscope, or data logger. This can be caused by several factors, including long distance between accelerometers and the data acquisition system, or when mounting sensors to electrically charged test articles, such as an electric motor or generator. Ground loop interference will often present itself as 60 Hertz noise on your sensor data, associated with the frequency of AC mains power here in the United States. Ditrain offers three types of grounding schemes, first being case grounded accelerometers. These are accelerometers that are grounded to the test article through the housing of the sensor. These sensors are typically smaller and more affordable than their associated isolated counterparts. The downside being that case grounded sensors can be affected by ground loop interference. The second type are base isolated sensors. These are sensors that use hard anodized cups or washers and base assemblies constructed with non-conductive epoxy. These methods isolate the mounting surface of the sensor from the test article. The third type are case isolated sensors. These are sensors that are isolated within the sensor's housing and utilize multi-pin connectors to isolate the ground return from the entire sensor housing and connector shell. For this test, four sensors were selected. The 7500 series is a case isolated variable capacitance accelerometer. This unit has a differential output and requires an excitation of 9 volts to 32 volts DC. It has a frequency response from 0 Hz to 1 kHz. The 3055 series is a base isolated integrated electronic piezoelectric accelerometer. It has a single ended output and requires an IEPE constant current excitation. It has a frequency response from 1 Hz to 10 kHz. The 7705 series is a case grounded hybrid variable capacitance piezoelectric accelerometer with a single ended output. It requires a 5 volt to 28 volt DC excitation and has a frequency response of 0 to 10 kHz. The 3030 series is a case grounded integrated electronic piezoelectric accelerometer. It has a single ended output and requires an IEPE constant current excitation. It has a frequency response of 2 Hz to 10 kHz. The four sensors were mounted to an aluminum plate that was affixed to an electrodynamic shaker. Electrodes on the bottom of the plate were connected to a function generator, which was used to create a ground loop to demonstrate the effects of the different sensors' isolation schemes. An anodized aluminum base was used to electrically isolate the aluminum plate from the electrodynamic shaker. For this test, an electrodynamic shaker was used to provide an excitation to the four sensors mounted on the aluminum plate. A four channel data acquisition system was used to capture the voltage from each sensor. A 12 volt benchtop power supply was used to power the 7705L and two IEPE constant current power supplies were used to power the two IEPE sensors. A function generator was used to create a 200 Hertz sine wave to feed into the amplifier for the electrodynamic shaker, as well as generating a sine sweep for the voltage passing through the aluminum plate. And finally, the 4010 signal conditioner was used to power the 7500 and convert the differential output to a single ended for the DAC. All sensors were powered and a display was created for the data acquisition system. The output for time domain and frequency domain were shown for each sensor. We can notice the random nature of the time waveform and the broadband noise of the sensors. Note that the amplitude of the frequency domain is logarithmic. Now let's provide a 200 Hertz sine wave excitation to the electrodynamic shaker. When we re-examine the data, we can see a smooth sinusoidal waveform corresponding to the excitation in each of the time plots. In the frequency domain, we can observe a distinct peak at 200 Hertz from the excitation of the shaker. The function generator was configured to conduct a linear sweep from 10 Hertz to 300 Hertz over 10 seconds. This signal will pass through the electrodes on the aluminum plate and present as a ground loop for any of the sensors that are not isolated. Now, let us provide an excitation to the electrodes on the aluminum plate. 
When we re-examine the data, we see no change in the output from the 7500 series case isolated sensor or the 3055 series base isolated sensor. However, this is not the case for the 7705 series or 3030 series case grounded sensors. For both sensors, we can observe some level of distortion to the time waveform, though the effects on the time waveform are much more noticeable on the 3030 series. When we review the data in the frequency domain, it becomes more apparent that the sensors are affected by the ground loop. For both units, we can observe a distinct peak of the ground loop as it sweeps from 10 Hz to 300 Hz in the frequency domain. By this example, it should be apparent when troubleshooting ground loop issues, the frequency domain is a powerful tool for detecting these anomalies. Now that we are able to successfully induce a ground loop and a method for observing this in the data, let's prescribe a solution to remedy this issue on a case-grounded sensor. Dietrain offers a variety of isolation bases that can be used to isolate case-grounded sensors from the test article. Let's install one of these bases on the 3030 series sensor and observe the effects. With the isolation base installed on the 3030 series sensor, we can no longer observe the effect of the ground loop, and we have successfully preserved the integrity of our vibration data. We hope you found this video informative. For additional information on Dytran products, please visit our website at dytran.com or reach out to one of our technical sales engineers to learn more today.